Hi guys, and welcome back to Movies That Matter with the Viking. And today, let's discuss all that latest news regarding Ben Affleck and Ben Affleck as Batman. Now, he did an interview with the New York Times. And they did a report on it. And a very interesting article, if you want to go give it a read. It takes a look at Ben Affleck's life in the last few years and his struggles through uh, addiction and his divorce. And also how that affected his movies and how it all affected each other. And just how he wasn't in a happy place. But thankfully, he's healthier now. If you've seen him lately, he looks good. He looks like he did when he was promoting Batman in 2016. He looks lean. He looks happy. He looks healthy. And that's good. But there's one part of the article that caught the eye of a lot of DC fans. Of a lot of Batman fans. And the article wrote, it said, The Batman, which Affleck was supposed to direct himself, he stepped aside allowing Matt Reeves to take over after deciding that the troubleshoot for Justice League had sapped his interest. Affleck never seemed to enjoy his time as Batman. His sullen demeanour while promoting Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice in 2016 resulted in the hit meme Sad Affleck. I showed somebody the Batman script, Affleck recalled. They said I think the script is good. I also think you'll drink yourself to death if you go through what you just went through again. And that's sad to hear. It's disappointing to hear. But what happened on Justice League resulted in Ben leaving the role and leaving the DCU and stepping aside. And now we have the Matt Reeves Batman film coming. And that's coming. That's currently shooting. Nothing we can do about that. But it shows that Warner Brothers was not a good place to be in 2016, 2017. It's a lot different now at the minute. There's new people in charge in certain areas. I'm sure it's still a little bit similar to how it was, but it has changed. And it's disappointing that that the reshoots and all that controversy around Justice League resulted in actors leaving. You know, um, Ben just had enough. It wasn't a good environment for him to be in for his health, for him as a person, so he left. And look, we can't hold any grudges towards that. It's Warner Brothers. It's Warner Brothers fault and that's now either in this this mess that they call it DCU nobody knows what exists who's in it what way they're doing the story you know it's just disappointing as a DC fan especially when he was such a good Batman in my opinion he's the best Batman that ever lived the best Batman that we've seen in live action on screen everything about him his look the way he talked the way he fought the relationship between him and Alfred. It was just perfect in my book and it's the kind of Batman that I wanted to see. I was as disappointed as anybody when I heard Ben Affleck was leaving the role. I was disappointed as anybody when I heard he wasn't directing the film. So all that is hard to hear as a DC fan. It really is. But if you've watched, if you know who Film Gob is and if you've watched his video about what really happened in that time period which led to Ben Affleck leaving the role. Film Gob heard this from a, an unnamed source and you know, he was video as a video watch, but it details that Toby Emmerich and Jeff Johns were the main reasons that Ben Affleck left the Batman. Seemingly Jeff Johns was putting his his nose in where it, it, it wasn't um well, it wasn't wanted and Toby Emmerich was kind of taking sides with Jeff Johns and all this. It's hard to know what to believe, but I'm sure Film God wouldn't have posted it unless he believed what his source told him. And a lot of it makes sense. It really does. Um, it all adds up. You know, Ben Affleck, he wanted to direct a Batman. He loves Batman. He wanted to be Batman. But there's certain things that led to him leaving. I know all the personal stuff as well didn't help. But you think that if he told Warner Brothers, look, I just need time away, I need a break. I think they would have done that. Yeah, but there was stuff inside the inside one of hers itself that was driving him away. I'm sure he's seen what they did to Zack, and they weren't happy. He wasn't happy over that at all because Zack Snyder is the reason he's in the DCU. And he says, and he's probably like, "Is this gonna happen to me when I'm making the Batman film?" And that's all in Film Gov's video as well. Ben Affleck wanted to make the Batman film the way he wanted. Jeff Johns was putting putting ideas in and making them more. Marvel kind of the Marvel tone that Justice League ended up being so Ben just had enough 
at the end of it all, you know, and then I suppose it's just trouble at work, trouble in personal life. It was all just too hard to handle and he ended up leaving. And now the DCU, in my opinion, is in a continuity mess because it's a Batman film coming. But it's not in a big as mess as it seems. After reading the article and after seeing that Ben Affleck is in a way better place, I genuinely hope, I have hope, that there is hope that Ben Affleck, ben Affleck can come back to the DCU in some capacity. I think he can. Now you'll say that Matt Reeves is making a Batman film with Robin Pattinson and we can't have two Batmans. But Warner Brothers went and they greenlit a Joker film that's in a separate universe, on its own, outside the DCU and it did very well. It's not connected to Wonder Woman or Aquaman or Justice League or any of these things. It's on its own and it did very well. And then in Birds of Prey, if you've seen that, they refer to not Joaquin Phoenix's Joker, not just a Joker in general, but Jared Leto's Joker. They didn't show his face, but they showed the same principles that Jared Leto's Joker had in Suicide Squad. They used the scene from Suicide Squad, which shows Jared Leto's back, but it's him. And then there's a scene where there's... Um, I don't know, just a, just a, an unknown person pretending to be Jared Leto and you can see his back and he's doing something with a tattoo thing but it's the same style and same clothes so they refer to Jared Leto's Joker so we have two Jokers one in the DCU one outside the DCU we currently have Robin Pattinson's Batman I don't think personally that it takes place in the DCU I think it takes place outside the DCU in its own world I think that's what Matt Reeves wants to do so why can't we have a Batman inside the DCU as well? Give Ben Affleck time. Talk to him. Make a deal. Bring him back in. If it's in Flashpoint, it's in Flashpoint. If it's in a Justice League 2 or 3, why can't you bring him back? We have two Jokers. We're not two Batmans. Audiences aren't stupid. And audiences probably won't even care that much either. It won't affect them going to see the film. They see Joker. They see Batman. It's going to gather interest and they're going to go see it. you market marketed it the right way and all this. But a Batman film on its own usually does well. Even the poor ones. So I don't think that's the word. I don't think that's completely out of the world to think about that. You know, we thought that when the Joker was announced, it was the end of Jared Leto. But they still referred to him in Birds of Prey. And they should have used him in Birds of Prey. But it's still not off the wall that he could come back in some capacity in the future. It all depends who's over Phillips and who's brought in as a director and who wants. If David Ayer was doing Suicide Squad 2, I'm sure Jared Leto would be back, you know, but it's James Gunn and there's a uh, brief beef between them two, so that wasn't going to happen. But I think the best thing that we can do with a fan base, as a DCU fan base, as a Zack Schneider fan base, of course we're fighting for the release of Schneider Cut. We do that every day. We have events, we have campaigns, we just show support, but I think what we do is we concentrate on getting to see the film that's already made, and the film that's already made is Justice League, is Zack Schneider's Justice League, we fight for that to be released, hopefully soon, hopefully we don't have to wait years for that to happen, but hopefully it's in the next year or so, that's a good goal to strive towards, get released in the next year, I personally think that will create huge buzz in the film world I think Twitter will be crazy I also think that the way Zack Snyder's Justice League ends it ends on a cliffhanger and when fans finally get to see the Snyder Cut and they see how good that it was and what Zack Snyder was setting up for future films and it ends on a cliffhanger the next, camp, the next movement will be to bring Zack Snyder back to the DCU to make Justice League 2 to make Justice League 3 and that's what's going to happen. Whether you like it or not, that's what's going to happen. You see the huge fan base that's already here right now for the Schneider Cut movement. That's not just going to go away when you release the film. What's going to happen is that's going to trans um, transfer to another thing. And that other thing will be bringing Zack back for, the, for those films. And I think the only person that can bring Ben Affleck back to DCU that he would come back for is Zack Schneider. He's the only one. He came on board because of Zack Snyder and the vision and the story that he wanted to tell. And then Zack left, Ben left. The two of them treated in very similar ways, especially if you watch Film Gob's video. 
very similar ways and it's not good and it was not nice in any standpoint it's not like Ben Affleck or Zack Schneider fucked people over they didn't they're very respectful filmmakers very good filmmakers and they do well on what they do but then I think it, it, we get the film released it's going to create buzz to get Just League 2 and 3 for Zack Schneider to come back Warner Brothers will be forced to have some talks with Zack Schneider they will be there's a huge buzz around the film on Twitter it's not just going to be Schneider Cut fans talking about it it's going to be general audiences too film critics bloggers all these people it's going to be a huge huge discussion because Warner Brothers gave in to the fan base and released the film and then Warner Brothers will be forced to have talks with Zack I don't know if they'll, they'll bring Zack back for Justice League 2 or Justice League 3 they might give Zack a different kind of DC film maybe similar to what Todd Phillips got a film Zack pick a film and do it outside the DCU do a standalone film that's not connected to that and just make a good film that could happen but I think the only way we get Ben Affleck back is Batman is by getting the Schneider Cut released by showing how big of a fan base is here for that world for Zack Schneider and for Ben Affleck and hopefully we get to see Ben Affleck come back we all want to see him at the Batman I know Matt Reeves is coming Robin Pattinson's Batman's coming that's okay that's fine one of others will have two Jokers, why not two Batmans? Just my opinion on the whole situation. I think this article and everything puts us in a better light. It gives us more hope than we already had. And don't forget, on the twenty on the seventeenth of November twenty nineteen, who tweeted hashtag release the Shannon Cut? Ben Affleck. He wants that film released. He wants his last outing to be a Batman. To be the way it was intended by Zack Schneider. And the way he intended himself. Not what happened with Justice League with Josh Whedon. That's not his back. That's not the way he wants to go out. So let's fight for that. Once we get that released. Who knows what's going to happen. Just have some hope. Keep tweeting. Keep supporting. Have hope. Stay positive. See you next time.